Hey everyone, welcome to our channel. My name is Jen. And I'm Shane. And we are the Yambors. By the time you see this video, we'll actually be celebrating our three year anniversary. Three years of marriage. Three years of marriage, yes. It's of a course. beautiful thing. It's a yeah. beautiful thing. Yep. So we thought that we would discuss, since it's three years of us being married together, three things that we've learned along the three year journey thus far. And with that said, let's get into it. <music> It's our anniversary. So yeah, three years of marriage. Three years of marriage. It's a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. Each and every day, each and every year is a blessing. Yes. And time flies. It really does. I know. Surely doesn't feel like three years. But that's also a good thing too because it goes to show that we're not counting down the days like this is a, a contract or something. <laughs> right. And, um, you know, it just shows that we're having a lot of fun yeah. throughout the process. And as we are having so much fun and welcoming all of these new changes in our life, time is flying, you know, time, time is, is going flying. by. Yeah. It is crazy. So for the people that do not know us or have never seen any of our content, we have been together since 2010. Mm -hmm. So since we were 20 years old and she was 19. and I was 19? You sure you, I wasn't 20 and you were 21? No, no, no. This is May, 28, May 28th, 2010. 2010, yeah. So you were a tender age of 19. Oh my gosh, <laughs> I thought I was 20. <laughs> so I was 20. I was 20. I just turned 20 because mm -hmm. my birthday's in March. Yeah. Yeah, so... 20 and 19 years old and we've been together ever since so but we're just celebrating three years of marriage and we took our sweet time and yeah. that's the way that we wanted to do it and just enjoy the journey along the way mm -hmm. and these three years of marriage really signify something more incredible because with us being together as long as we have like I said in one of our other videos, I didn't think that there was going to be much of a difference mm -hmm. of us getting married. I remember but you saying that. There truly is a difference between being in a relationship and just dating or even being engaged and then actually making it official and being married. Yes. And having rings on your fingers and, you know, being in the grocery store, or being wherever and say, oh, yeah, that's my wife. Yeah. Like it just holds weight and it just feels good. And three years in and no complaints. Yeah. And, you know, there are going to be bumps along the road. That's life. You right. know what I mean? But it's important to hold on to your values and what you exchanged in your vows. Like that's going to help push you forward when times feel like challenged, when you feel challenged in your, your marriage. And so, but all in all, it's been a beautiful journey thus far. And I'm excited to see where life continues to take us right. as we continue on and, and you know and we experience more anniversaries together yeah. so with that said i think it would be really cool for us to touch on some points um that we've learned thus far through the course of our marriage you want to start off with the first point or yeah, you want so, me to start no i'll start off with the first point i okay. think like what we want to do in these videos is just make sure that like it's not just about us like when we're talking about anniversaries and all that like yes we're celebrating something that's special to us but we're really wanting to dive into points and, and, and bring value to your relationship to your anniversaries yeah. to your marriage that's the reason why we're having content like this mm -hmm. and having these three points or three things that we've learned along the way of our three years of marriage yes. so we're going to start off with this first point so the point number one is working and thinking for the betterment of each other yes working as one working to like really thinking about every action that you take mm -hmm. not just for yourself but for the betterment of each other for right. the betterment of your relationship and your union and mm -hmm. making sure that every step that you're taking like mm -hmm. you're not just thinking for yourself anymore now yeah. you're thinking as a couple as yeah. a married couple that really have to move in a certain type of way so that it benefits both people mm -hmm. and and yeah it benefits both people and looking at it as how does this affect the health of my marriage right. like the decisions that i make the actions that i take all of it all of those things should be for the betterment of your marriage and so and i wanted to say like that's definitely something that i learned and that's the reason why i put it on there as a point i think that you know, when you're just dating or even in just engaged, 
there is a selfish part of you that you're just working and, and thinking for yourself and you're not really thinking all right, how is this benefiting both of us? Mm -hmm. And I think I was guilty of a lot of that um, before marriage. And when and once like marriage started and I started thinking a little bit different, thinking a little bit deeper mm -hmm. in love, I started realizing like, I'm not just thinking, I'm just not here for myself anymore. It's yeah. for us because this is who I want to spend the rest of my life with. So we have to be on the same page. Yes. And that is just vital um, to have long lasting and fulfilling marriage and just happiness and so forth. Yeah, no, <laughs> I agree. I agree 100 percent. I think that's so true. You know, you you have to detach yourself a little bit. And I think that, as you said, during the da dating stage and other parts of your relationship before you get to marriage, that's still like part of you that's selfish and that wants to hold on to that old life. Right. But when you enter marriage, you're entering into a new chapter where it's two becoming one. So part of you have to, part of you has to let that go mm -hmm. and look at it from a different lens and a lens of being together and making decisions together as a team, as a nucleus, as one. Amen. So with that said, I'm going to transition into point number two. And we thought that it was very important to remember to revisit the foundation of your marriage like Ooh. yeah you know like what did you say to your partner in your vows right. what what holds significance to you what is the foundation of your marriage what are those components what does that look like so we feel that it's very important that you not forget those things you know very similar to a house for example when you buy a house you have a foundation it can be beautiful on the inside but if the foundation isn't sound if it isn't balanced you know then things will start to fall apart and that's like your marriage you have to revisit your your vows and revisit the foundation of your marriage those components that make up the foundation of your marriage to say hey what is still working what can we improve what is doing really well for us in our marriage and really like expound on that i think that's so important sometimes we we forget those little things and that is what holds our marriage together sometimes you know looking back and saying like what was what was the point of us marrying each other in the first place? What mm. was the purpose? What was the why? And so I, we think it's so important to, you know, revisit those parts of your marriage and the right. foundation of your marriage is very important. And just remember to revisit that because as we get older and our marriage matures, things will change. Right. You know, things and, will change. And talking about revisiting, I think, I mean having these conversations is not mm -hmm. only helpful, hopefully to other people, but it's yeah. helpful, helpful for us too. Yeah. Like being able to revisit each year and say, man, this is what I'm grateful for. This yes. is the reason why I fell in love with this woman. Mm -hmm. This is the reason why I wanted to marry her. Mm -hmm. And remembering all those points of why you fell in love and what you said during your vows, you always have to remember that even when, it can be a little bit tough, you know, yes. what you said was an incredible example about the foundation mm -hmm. and, and about a house, like mm -hmm. building a house without a foundation, eventually things will crumble. Yep. But when you have a strong foundation and you yep. have a good standing on mm -hmm. what you believe in and, and yeah. making sure that the support is there, mm -hmm. then you can weather whatever storms come your way. You don't see coming. Mm hmm. And you'll be able to weather that storm. And that's yeah. just amazing to have that analogy of the foundation of a home comparing it to the foundation of a relationship. And yeah. they really do coincide. They do. They do. And, you know, it's it's like kind of going back to the, the home analogy. When you buy a house and, you know, it's beautiful, you you do all your checks and everything. It's not like you're done after that. You know, 10 years later, it's not like, oh, well, I looked at the house on day one and everything was fine. So I right. expect everything will still be the same. You have to maintain it. Mm -hmm. And that's the same thing that you do in your relationship and your marriage, yeah. you're maintaining your, in your fine tuning. And that's why it's so important to, to revisit your vows and understand like what those components are that make up the foundation of your marriage. So like you said, when times do get challenging, you can refer back to that. Right. And also and even if it should not, be hopeful. Oh, sorry. I was going to say okay, one thing. Sorry. Yeah. I was going to say, and honestly, I hope if anything, 
it gives you hope. You know what mm. I mean? Like when, when things are difficult and you revisit your vows and you revisit those um, pieces that created the beautiful foundation of your marriage, that it makes you hopeful that you can get back to that if things are challenging, right, you know, right. or if you have a, a season where things aren't going so well in yeah. your marriage and that does happen sometimes, and, but yeah. And you know, that that's a good point because you're touching on like when, relationships and marriages are hitting a rocky road mm -hmm. but it's also good even when things aren't course, rocky yes. like when things are going good yeah to just always still continue to remember mm -hmm. those vows that you said and just yeah. remember that foundation mm -hmm. but also it just continues to keep you grateful yeah like for sure stay grateful for your partner mm -hmm. and even when things are good you remembering like mm -hmm. man this woman really is amazing. Yeah. This woman really is a queen. And mm -hmm. this I'm I'm so lucky to have her. Yeah. And vice versa, mm -hmm. I hope. <laughs> of no. <laughs> no, I hope. Yes. Yes. Right. And vice versa. Because the way that you know, a husband or a partner adores the other person, it should be reciprocated. Right. You know, so, like everyone deserves to be appreciated and adored and loved throughout their relationship yeah so the good times and the bad times i think it's always vital to have that foundation remember that foundation remember those vows remember why you love this person and why you fell in love and everything it's just like yeah. you've gotta be on that page and i think the next point and the last point that we're going to cover really goes hand in hand with the point that we just discussed and just saying like you know it makes you love your partner even more and you know Ho hopefully you have a deeper connection when you do revisit your vows, like whether it's good or bad. But lastly, never stop dating your partner mm. and never stop learning new things about your partner. You know, I think oftentimes and we hear this from friends that are, you know, dating, they say um, or that have been in relationships that didn't quite work out. They're like, well, when I first met this guy or met this girl, he or she was very charming. You know, they kind of told me everything I wanted to hear, it seemed like. But then when we got in a relationship, it seems like they just stopped pursuing me. All of that stuff that was happening in the beginning yeah. just disappeared. It dissipated. And I think that when you're in a marriage, not this doesn't happen to everyone. So I'm not saying that. But the last thing you want to do is be like, OK, we got to marriage and now things just stop. You know, you should always be continuing to pursue your partner, always dating your partner. And dating can look very different. It doesn't have to just be like actually going out on dates. It can be you spending quality time at home. Oh, sorry. No, it can be you going. spending it can be you spending quality time at home with your partner, understanding what their love languages are. Have their love love languages changed over the course of time? Because as time go on, we as humans just adapt and evolve and change into different people and learning new things about your partner, you know, establishing a deeper connection. I yeah. think those those things are so important and can keep a marriage long lasting and fulfilling throughout. Yeah. The point that I'll add to that is that it's so easy to fall into a mundane type of relationship and just go with the flow. And the longer that you're with somebody, the more that you feel like, oh, I know everything about this person. Mm -hmm. But learning about your partner day in and day out and really pursuing some type of way of like, OK, how can I get to know this person a little bit yeah. better or just learning from experiences like I still learn things about you that I didn't know or that I'll learn a, a certain type of cork or a certain type of thing that gets under your skin. Mm -hmm. And I'll be like, all right, let me try to approach her in a different way yeah, so that we don't either get into an argument or we don't, uh, you know, go into a tit for tat because I've learned a little new wrinkle of how she operates. Mm -hmm. Like, there's plenty of situations where you can really just evaluate yourself mm -hmm. and your partner and you can learn a, a small little thing that you might have not learned previously. Yeah. And I think those little things really make the difference. But you have to be you have to be really like in tune with like really wanting to learn. Yeah, and it has really to be intentional. To, yeah, yeah, intentional. That's the mm -hmm. word I was looking for. Mm -hmm. It has to be intentional. And you have to be thinking intentionally, like, how can I be a better partner? Yes. How can I 
approach certain situations in a better way so that it helps our relationship? How can I provide advice to my wife in a way that it's received Mm -hmm. rather than it feeling like she is either being attacked or that she is being uh, looked down on Mm -hmm. if there's any criticism to be had. Mm -hmm. These are the type of things that you can learn on a daily basis. And that's just through experience, just day in, day in and day out, just trying to figure out, okay, I learned a little something new about her. I learned something new about him. And that's the way that I look at it. And I intentionally am thinking like, how can I be a better partner? How can I learn about her? How can I learn about us? Right, right. Because um, at the end of the day, you know, as you get to learn deeply about your partner, that's going to help the dynamic of your relationship because it's going to help you guys as a team, like, just better approach things throughout the course of your relationship or your marriage as they come along. Right. You know how your partner responds to adversity. You know how your partner responds to challenges. You know what makes your partner happy. You know what makes your partner feel secure, loved, attended to. Um, all of those things, honored, mm-hmm. all of those things. And that's, that comes with experience and that comes with dating your partner and constantly like intentionally choosing to learn more about your partner right so i think that's great um and i did want to touch on like we touched on the learning part but i wanted to touch on the dating part too i think we did a previous video about keeping the spark alive and i want you guys to go watch that video next and i'll put a, a link below of that video as well but keeping the spark alive is a huge dynamic to a relationship that lasts for many years and decades. Yeah. And you always have to pursue your partner in a way that it feels like dating. Like it Mm -hmm. feels like, hey, we're doing something that like I'm excited for. Like I'm I'm excited to do do these things, even if it's just laying in the bed watching a movie yeah like and i think that um not to to cut you off i think that sometimes when people think like never stop dating your partner that it has to be like you actually taking them out and like doing things all the time and that is a part of dating your partner too but just laying at home spending quality time in the bed choosing to watch a movie and not hang out with friends this time and just say like tonight's about us right that is dating your partner um Hearing your partner say like, you know what, I would love to get back into reading and you buy them a book or something, Mm -hmm. you know, things like that is dating your partner. It doesn't always have to be, you know, going out to eat or extravagant. It's oftentimes the the little things that that matter the most because it shows that you're listening to me. You hear me. You understand what my needs and sometimes my wants are and you're fulfilling that right and so yeah i didn't mean to cut you off but i just wanted to say that oh no like no that, that, that was a great point and mm-hmm. you can cut me off anytime if you got some great points to, to go <laughs> like that um but yeah i think this is a great way to end it mm-hmm. this is our three-year anniversary of us being married and it's been blissful mm-hmm. and we wanted to bring out these three points or these three things that we've learned along the way of yes. these three years because I know it can help somebody out there and I can and we hope that it's helping you. So yeah. if you're getting value from the content that we're putting out there around building better relationships and better love, mm-hmm. please subscribe. Please be a part of this journey and enjoy the journey of your own as well. Yeah. And we're going to continue to put out content along these lines of marriage and bettering relationships. And this is an incredible three years. Yes. And to many more. To many more. And we hope that you have many more as well. Yes, yes. So we'll see you guys in the next one. My name is Shane. And I'm Jen. And this is the Yambors. Bye, everyone. Enjoy the journey.